Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. This is another episode of Security Matters Hawaii, and we've got Matt Barnett here with us today. The, actually, he's remote today, but we've got him on the, on the show. Uh, he's the president of Mercury Security, a access control system uh, hardware manufacturer, and we're going to talk kind of about the state of the industry. Matt, I really appreciate you joining us today. I know you're a busy guy, always on the road, so glad we got you somewhere to sit for 30 minutes and talk with us. Well, thank you for inviting me, Andrew. This is great. No worries. Hey, um, I like to start off and just take the security folks that, that I get and kind of ask them, you know, from a security perspective, what, uh, what keeps you up at night lately? Yeah, it, it's a fun question to ask. Uh, luckily, I'm a heavy sleeper, but <laughs> you know, when we look at uh, what's going on in the industry, uh, obviously the, the word lately is all about cybersecurity, and, and mm -hmm. rightfully so. So it's long overdue, and I know you've been – You've been a proponent of this conversation for a long time, as well as Bill Bozeman at PSA. And, uh, you know, it certainly has been in the news least recently in this industry and uh, in general. So that, you know, I never want to be uh, the, the name that's uh, in the press when it comes to having an issue with cybersecurity. So you know, we're spending an inordinate amount of time and effort to make sure that our products and our customers that use our products are protected. Yeah, and I wanna, we're definitely going to get into a, a little bit of uh, SIA and OSDP and all the work you folks have done there. Um, I know, yeah, this week, interestingly, you know, after you know, we had scheduled this, we saw, um, you know, there was a lot of talk about that research that was done at Google, which I think to some of us on the inside of the industry was kind of old news, but it sort of got rehyped. And, you know, this, uh, this, this vulnerability challenge that we've got around encryption um, is something that, you know, if, if you dig deep enough into, into products, you can find problems. And um, I, uh, I know Mercury's done a whole lot uh, to get us from sort of the, the legacy place that we were and to adopt these new, um, uh, the new OSDP standard. Uh, I wanted to talk briefly and kind of start back with that legacy stuff so you could get a chance to give us your history. You know, I came from the days of all serial communications, and I remember we had Lantronics modules that got us onto the network, and from there we kind of went berserk. Um, what, what, you know, from, from your perspective on, on the history of the industry, uh, did, did it take too long? Kind of give us your, you know, where it went, how it went along, and, uh, you know, what you experienced along the way. Yeah, so I've got hard to hard to believe 27 years in in physical security, electronic security, starting uh, on the integrator side of the business. So understanding what you and the others in the industry on the integration side have to deal with, and uh, really for the last uh, 18, 19 years being on the manufacturer side of the business. Mm -hmm. So really got to see it from from both sides, which I think is helpful in my position to understand, you know, what the what the channel to market has to deal with. Uh, when they're you know installing and, and maintaining these products, uh, but certainly as you said, going back to the old hardwired copper days and then <laughs> modems, and uh, it's it's kind of crazy to think that in a lot of ways it's probably more secure uh, than what uh, a lot of systems have today, being connected on an IP network. Mm. Uh, because good point. The, good point. Yeah, you, know, you know, having having the dedicated copper connecting these points was a closed system loop and. As the as the industry progressed and using the available backbone in most companies using their IP network, uh, it just made a lot of sense to tie these devices onto that network uh, because it allows you so much more flexibility. But it also now opens up uh, a lot of uh, you know potential doors to external threats. And so I think we, as an industry, have been probably a little late to the market on how to not only provide products that are hardened against these potential threats, uh, but there's a lot of education that has to go along with that as well mm -hmm. to make sure that the products are being installed in the appropriate manner. And uh, I think there's still a ton of work that needs to go. So, you know, manufacturers like Mercury and, and our parent company, HID, can have the most robust feature sets in the world when it comes to cybersecurity, encryption, OSDP, and others. Uh, but they, a lot of times, have to be configured and enabled in the field, right? And that's that is a potential um, missing link right now that, that we really need to do a better job on. Yeah, I, I gave a talk last week with the uh, Armed Forces Communication Electronics Association, and I, I sh always share people, processes, and products as, as the, the vulnerability. I was talking about sort of uh, our industry as a, as a, 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 a supply chain threat. And um, 
it, it's interesting when I shared with them some of just just some just in maps of some devices and some um, uh, taking a look at some of the certificates on the devices and point out some of the flaws. It's uh, funny that these these guys are all kind of in charge of security networks, uh, senior networks, military networks, and they were surprised at the low level of of um, a configuration that a lot of people in our industry do. And that's, you know, that's a, a training thing, as you pointed out. Um, it's, it's funny, I, I don't talk to many integrators, and you know, we, we have a, a, a large body of them through PSA that are seem really proactive. You know, what's your, what's your feeling about getting from sort of legacy into this modern idea of encrypting these networks, encrypting these communications? Um, you know, you, you travel quite a bit. What, do, what are you seeing? There, there's definitely momentum uh, building in the marketplace. Uh, I think as IT has gotten more involved in the security uh, in, in different companies around the world, certainly they're looking at the devices that are on their networks and, and coming to the realization that they have problems that they're going to have to solve by upgrades. And uh, in, in a lot of cases, you know, it's really not an upgrade. It's really a forklift replacement. Uh, so you know it's happening, but it's not happening at the speed you might you know you might think. Uh, the reality is, in, in our sector, the business and, and access control, you know these products are installed, and customers expect them to be installed for 10, 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. and without a lot of uh, you know not a lot of fiddling around with them, so to speak. So uh, you know there's a bit of a legacy mindset that you know these things don't have to be touched once they've been put you know in a building. And, controlling the access or even video being installed uh, in a, even going back and doing firmware upgrades in a lot of cases just doesn't happen. So there's a, there's a lot to be done there. There is, there is definitely some momentum and we're getting, you know, customers that are, that are talking to us directly about what they should be doing going forward. Uh, but it, it's, you know, budgets are what they are and mm. uh, this is sometimes a hard one to get through. Yeah, I, I tend to talk about I still believe that 90%, maybe more, of the of the access control systems that are out there are still running, you know, Wagon. They're using legacy hardware that cannot support the newer protocol, so it's got to be forklifted. I think I think the 125k Prox car may still be 90% in use out there. Does that? Do you think in North America that's a reasonable statement? Uh, absolutely. I think. Uh, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I, I would say currently that maybe one to two percent of the card readers installed in North America are OSDP. Wow. It's it's you know gaining momentum, but uh, you know that spec was uh, released ten years ago now, <laughs> so it's not new. Yeah. Uh, we've Mercury has had OSDP on the panel for ten years, uh, but you know it's really been the last couple of years now that we start to see momentum building people saying we only want to go now OSDP. So, you know, we'll be testing the waters. We released a panel uh, recently that doesn't have Wigan. It only has OSDP ah, reader good. connections on it. And we'll see if the market is really going to be accepting of that, because if that product doesn't sell well, then we'll know how serious is the market <laughs> about you know, having secure protocol down to the reader level. Mm -hmm. um, does it, do you feel that, you said customers are coming to you direct. Do you feel it's, it's enterprise, are they, I know DOD's concerned, obviously, right? So I'm, I'm getting, we're getting questions out of those guys, and they have our, our taxpayer dollars, so it's not like a uh, uh, bottomless pit, but, you know, they, they tend to move in these directions. They have more regulatory guidance. But I'm, I'm getting questions in healthcare, and I'm getting questions from my financial sector and in critical infrastructure. But are you seeing commercial enterprise? Are they concerned? Are they coming to you guys? Are they you know, looking for solutions? The, the verticals you mentioned are, are really the ones that are kind of the bullseye here that okay. are that are progressive about this. Certainly, some of the you know Fortune 100, uh, you know, they're they're also the ones that are kind of kind of push this along, and you know, so they see the vulnerability and they know uh, based on some of the other news stories that have been out there, they don't want to be the ones that uh, that have a problem uh, because they had systems on their network that weren't um, that weren't encrypted. So you know, they tend to be the ones out in the forefront. We're, you know, you're not, we're not, I don't think we're going to see you know, 80 percent of the market is, is 16 card readers or less. Those are not going to be the companies that are going to be looking mm. for perhaps the most cyber secure uh, systems available. Uh, they just want to have something, if anything, installed. But the, 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 the enterprise accounts are the ones that are going to push this as well as the critical infrastructure and in government, as you said. 
Yeah, I have. I talk a lot about the the supply chains out here. Obviously, in the DoD is kind of I think at the forefront of asking for more. Uh, robust protection from its supply chain, not only for the data that maybe government data they're handling, but that extends to the, the physical perimeter of those facilities. You know, as we need cybersecurity, we need physical security kind of combined. Um, do you think it's going to take that, or do you think, uh, I mean, do you think the industry will heal itself even for those small guys, or do you think it's going to take sort of a more of a regulatory push um, to get this commercial sector active in, in upgrading or replacing these, these products? Well, again, I think some of the bigger commercial sector is going to move, but, you know, we're, we end up building products for those companies, and then it, you know, the feature sets go downstream from there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not like we're going to have one product for the low end of the market that doesn't have those. I would say if you're releasing a product today that's not cyber secure, mm -hmm. then you, you may not be in business in four or five years. <laughs> go back to the drawing so, board. You know, we're... Yeah, so you know we're building it into the product, and if it's used in an enterprise or if it's used in a small office with two card readers, they have the feature sets on board to make it work. Now, whether again they're turned on or not is going to be, you know, based on the end user and the integrator installing it. Yeah. So I know there's a big. We have a specifier show coming up, Ray Cologne show pretty soon. Do you think we need to, uh, or do you think manufacturers will push some of this education out? I mean, I remember talking with Axis. Um, how they, they've had 8021X embedded in the product forever, and they said no one uses it. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, you know, if you're providing it and the integrator community is not configuring it because the customer doesn't know how to ask for it, um, how much of an issue do you think that is? I mean, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's problematic to my, to my way of thinking. Uh, yeah, it, is a, it is a big issue, and uh, we had a, a roundtable at our last consultant event, and it was only supposed to be 30 minutes, and we went well over an hour just talking about this one topic. It, we never got off this question. The you know, again, we build these features in, and I think the consultants have done a good job, but there's more work to be done in making sure that any system that's going to be bid on a project that they're writing a spec for needs to have these features in them, or they shouldn't be allowed to you know, participate. And that's the only way to get really the the manufacturers to make sure that they're building products with these protocols and, and these encryption technologies built in. And then again, the, the, the consultant and the end user are going to have to hold uh, the integrators responsible to make sure that they're being enabled and turned on. So, uh, you know, there's been a, an issue that we found. We had encryption between panel and panel, and it was an option. You had to turn it on in the in the feature set. And we found that doing some survey work of, of uh, end users that uh, nine times out of ten it wasn't enabled. Mm. So our latest generation, we just turned it on by default. And if for some reason they want to turn it off, they have to go in and manually do it. So, I, again, I think as manufacturers, we need to build products uh, that are, you know, maybe easier to configure and install and turn these things on. And you really have to go out of your way to turn them off. So we're almost – you know, making it harder to defeat, if you will. Yeah, secure by default. I love it. I think I think in a lot of cases we need that sort of help. Um, tell you what, we got to take a we got to pay some bills, so we'll take about a one minute break for commercial time, and then we'll be right back with uh, Matt Barnett from Mercury Security. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Security Matters. I'm Andrew, the Security Guy. We're here with Matt Barnett from Mercury Security Products today. And uh, we're kind of taking a drive through the industry. So we talked about some of the legacy problems. 
uh, that we have. We talked about some of the adoption issues that we're seeing out there. And, you know, we know how to do it right. Uh, widespread, it's not happening. Sometimes it's budget considerations. Sometimes it's lack of knowledge. Um, I love, Matt, your, your idea of, of secure by default. Um, I talked to some folks about, some camera folks, about the last thing the camera ought to do is give me video. I should have to secure it, and I can't get video out of it until it has a checkbox for all those security settings. It, you know, people turn, plug it in, they get video, and they walk away, right? That's a problem, I think. So uh, good, good on Mercury for doing that. Um, you, uh, Mercury supplies hardware for a lot of different software providers, right? So we've got uh, sort of your, the big guy, the big legacy guys from United Technologies down to, we've got a lot of new players in the market that are doing cloud. Um, how, uh, how's the, you know, to, it reminds me of the old phone, phone line days we talked about earlier, but um, what do you think about the cloud adoption with the access control? Well, I, I think it's a natural progression in this industry. Uh, I made the comment at a, uh, at a, a event last year that you know, five years from now, we'll look back and say, you know, why did we do it any different than having these <laughs> systems all cloud-based? Uh, it just makes it makes too much sense from a service supportability aspect. You know, one of the biggest obstacles that most large end users have is the upgrade process for their system is massive, and you have to typically have the entire system upgraded worldwide all at one time because the systems can't have you know, disparate versions running. Right. So, you know, for an enterprise customer with locations around the world and running software, uh, that's a big expense and it's a it's a logistical nightmare. So, you know, having a cloud-based solution for access control video, uh, I think is a natural progression. It'll take a while. Again, uh, these systems take a long time to migrate, but uh, luckily, on the Mercury side, you know, our system doesn't care. You plug it into a network and it'll it'll talk to a local server, it'll talk to a server in the cloud. It, it you know, it can be configured either way. And we've, you know, put the technologies in to allow for that TLS level encryption, you know, 1.2 TLS version. So it's as, it's as secure or more secure than doing a credit card transaction on the internet. Uh, but there's a, you know, there's a ways to go. So the, the obstacles that we keep hearing about uh, again, the, the user base tends to be a little skeptical, especially in the security end users. When IT is involved, mm -hmm. uh, usually less skeptical and more uh, more accepting of moving directly to the cloud. Um, so a lot of the manufacturers are, in the traditional sense, are trying to catch up with cloud-enabled software. There are new entrants into the market that are just cloud uh, by default, and I think they're having success in that area. Uh, where really nobody else is filling the void today. Yeah, we we've had great success with some of those providers, and I, I um I for me it's I think it's important that you know especially you know from your perspective that Mercury can fill all of those niches, right? So you've got the you got the big guys who want to you know the server huggers they're always want to own their things, but the cloud gives us a, a lot of uh, agility. Uh, with with product upgrades and things that you mentioned that we we just haven't had in the past. I think that's going to go lower costs substantially. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to, I don't know how much we could sort of talk about this, but you know, you've got uh, competitors uh, out there who make their own product as, you know, it's kind of a, a, a silo, right? They make their, their hardware and their software. Um, and some of which have also, I think have a bit of a, a controller, but they're starting to use your hardware as well, or they can use their hardware or your hardware. Um, do you get a sense of how those guys think they're gonna compete? I mean, to me, Mercury's kind of really expanded into a, a lot of different software manufacturers are using Mercury. So I don't know how, if I'm making my own hardware against a Mercury-based hardware you know, offering, I don't understand how I can be competitive long-term. Well, I, I agree. I, I think the market <laughs> is shifting and you know, the end users have become much more educated. You know, the internet has allowed them to do research and now they're asking a lot more in, in, more in-depth questions of what systems they're gonna use going forward. You know, so those proprietary manufacturers, uh, I don't think they're going to go away anytime soon, but it's getting harder and harder. You know, the investment they have to make to keep these technologies up to date is only going to accelerate with the cybersecurity aspects and other things. So as new standards are being released by the governments around the world, not just the U.S. government, but, you know, other governments around mm -hmm. the world are, are coming on board with higher uh, assurance uh, identification. They want to make sure that the systems aren't hackable from the card to the reader, the reader to the panel, and then on to the network or to the cloud. 
uh, that's going to require a lot of investment or they're just not going to play in those in those areas. And uh, so I think it, it gets very expensive. I mean, you see the investment that we're doing here at Mercury and at HID, uh, it, I think it becomes very difficult for uh, smaller players in this market to compete if they're trying to build everything from scratch when they can you know, certainly use a product uh, like Mercury or like the HID Vertex products that mm -hmm. um, you know, they've got really great technology right out of the box. And the secret sauce is, is really in their user interface, whether they want to be an on-premise solution or they want to be a cloud solution. You know, the feature sets, what the end users, you know, that's what they see and that's what they use. And I think that's really where the focus should should be when it comes to, you know, those those manufacturers. Yeah. Um, well, we talk about other other manufacturers and integration. Access control platforms tend to really be the, the, the basis of many of the, uh, you know, the, the video gets integrated, the audio gets integrated, the intrusion gets integrated, and the operate sort of from the access control platform as the, uh, the monitoring tool and the integration platform. Do, are you folks asked to do that from your from a hardware perspective, or do you tend to leave that to the other software manufacturer, or is there a dual play there? I think especially as we get into cloud, it could become you know some of each. And I don't. I was kind of wondering the status of that. Yeah, so it's it's a valid question. Our panels has, have moved now to the Linux operating system. You know, we introduced our first panel with Linux about five years ago, and we had so much success with that that we decided to uh, update the entire uh, intelligent controller line, and they all run Linux now. So those were all released back in July. And when you're running on that type of an operating system, it allows for a lot more third-party development capability you know, so we've embedded, you know, we call them drivers, but they're basically apps that run on the panel that we talk to, uh, you know, ASA Abloy wireless locks and Allegiant wireless locks and, and, and others in, the, in that category. We have integrations to elevator destination dispatch that are being deployed in most, mm. you know, multi-tenant high-rise facilities around the world. And so those are basically apps that, uh, similar to what you would run on your iPhone or your Google device, your, your handset. So they having these different apps. And so what else can we tie in? We've tied in life safety power and their intelligent power supply. Mm -hmm. We're working with Altronics. So they, we're providing the data. So maybe Mercury is not directly in that, you know, in that market segment per se, but we're a conduit and, and becomes really an appliance on the network. What else do you want to do with it uh, from, a, from a security standpoint? And you know, quite frankly, in the future, it may be other systems in the building, IoT, other building control systems. So we have the ability to tie in to those and we'll continue to work with manufacturers that specialize in that side of the, those sides of the market. Hmm. So so once you've got that built in and, and you can perform the integration, it's really just a matter of them being able to display that in their software or in their UI in the way that the customer needs to consume it. Yeah, so we're you know we're a collection point of data, and we can send we can store the data locally, or we can send it to a, you know a database in the cloud or on an on-premise server, and you know then it can be displayed in a dashboard, or you can do business analytics on it. So a lot of the work that HID and, and I know some of our other partners are doing is collecting that data and then being able to you know action off that data. So if this facility, for instance, is typically has a hundred people uh, on a Monday morning. You know that show up between seven and eight, and for some reason there's you know only ten people show up. Somebody might want to know about that, <laughs> and so having the collection of that data and then being able to action on that, I think is is certainly very valuable. So we're we're going to see more. You know they call it AI now, but it's basically business intelligence going to be run against the data, and having that data in the cloud just allows you to do you know much more uh, with it, and a lot easier to to work with, quite frankly, than having disparate databases of information around around the network. Yeah, you know, we had uh, Andreas from Arculis, uh, Andreas Peterson recently, and you know, their take on security, yeah, it's, they have a video product, but everything they're doing is based on Google, you know, machine learning um, and, and, and business intelligence, business analytics. Um, it sounds like you guys are tapping right into that as well. And, uh, but your idea is going to be to uh, offer the capability and then the, the it'll be on the software manufacturer, I guess, to mine that out. Um, is it a service that you'll provide to them, you think? Or um, how do you think it'll be consumed by the, the software providers that are using your hardware? 
Yeah, I don't think that'll be something that Mercury directly is involved in, but and certainly HID is working on that. So our parent company is okay. is uh, providing those as cloud services, so companies that can su subscribe to that data that's being collected. And so it's part of a, a, a you know a future connected architecture scenario. Mm -hmm. Some of the larger players, you know, they'll build that capability themselves, or they could uh, also partner with HID and, and subscribe to that type of data. Uh, but we just want to be the conduit to, you know, collect that data locally since we, you know, are almost always going to be on, on premise. Mm -hmm. We're a collection point for not only access control, but alarm and other data, uh, again, tying in other devices. So, you know, the ability to not only monitor, but also from a serviceability standpoint, you know, what version is this panel running? Um, what version is the card reader running? Can you update the firmware and the reader remotely from the cloud? And so from an enterprise perspective, you know, being able to manage your uh, your entire portfolio from a, from a dashboard, uh, I think is a missing link today. And certainly we're enabling that type of functionality uh, with our parent company, HID, as well as some of the others you mentioned, Arcules, it's something that, that they are certainly very interested in doing as well. Yeah, and I know we, we did, um, Ed, see you guys have been uh, really helpful in, with SIA developing OSDP you know, along the way, and in Interop this year, we actually pushed information out to a card reader so that, you know, the bi-directional capability of OSDP is amazing. We didn't really get to talk about that too much today, but how's that partnership with SIA? Are they um, fun to work with over there? It's, it seems like a great group. You guys have gotten a lot done. Yeah, I think their their focus on the manufacturer side has certainly been uh, great for companies like Mercury and, uh, and others. Uh, so this was, I think, their first, and it's maybe still their their only uh, spec that's been written. Uh, you know, Mercury and, and HID at the time were instrumental in getting the OSDP spec written, and it's a continuous effort, right? So uh, you know, the new version is out that adds some uh, addition, what they call secure channel, the uh, encryption. Um, so again, you mentioned bi-directional, but you know, to me, the, that that is important. The the other technology that, as you said, we didn't talk about, you know, being able to upgrade the reader firmware mm -hmm. uh, via the Mercury panel uh, that may be connected to a cloud service and maybe an on-premise server, but have, having the ability to manage the readers, you may in a transition going from you know Prox to Smart Card, you know, you might want to turn off Prox at some point if you're moving to mobile credentials you might want to turn off functionality in the reader. Uh, today, that's more of a manual process with most systems, but in the future, that really should all be a checkbox in a, in a cloud portal, right? So we're, we're enabling that using the OSDP standard, uh, but there are some other really cool things that we're working with manufacturers, HID and others, to enable through the you know, edge devices, whether it's a biometric reader, you know, facial recognition, iris scan. Um, you know, we're, we're tied into all of those, and we're trying to really bring you know, new technologies to market that make end users' lives easier. Amazing stuff. Mercury's really taking the lead in, in the access control industry out there. Matt, I really appreciate your time today. Uh, we've run out of time. I'll have to get you back in here in six months and see where we're at with the industry. Really appreciate it. Aloha. Love to come out and visit. Thank you.